What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the In the Round podcast. It's your boy, Matt Burrell, here at the luxurious DM Monday Studios, Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, we have got a very special episode for you guys today. Episode 99 with my good buddy, Mr. J.D. Groover. Now, J.D., he... Is a he's a, basically a Swiss Army knife here in Nashville, uh, tour manager, very involved at Seagill Music Publishing House here in Nashville, Tennessee. He's been here for a while and uh, has a lot to say, a lot of great stories, a lot of great advice for folks like me that are here in the music game in Nashville, Tennessee. So we've got a great episode with him. Got to give a shout out to our sponsors. We got our friends at Whale Tail Media, Wales, BZ, Gracie. They get all your videos, all your photos done. They are awesome. And they even do your weddings if you're out there getting hitched. Uh, you can find them every other Tuesday at our Writers' Rounds at Live Oak Music Row. So check them out, Whale Tail Media. We also got our friends at Saxman Studios, Grady and the boys out there in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Always getting good work done for a very good price. Be sure to check them out. Look up Saxman Studios. Last but certainly not least, our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. You need TikTok help. You need Instagram help. Mitch and his team, they've got you covered. Mitch is working with all kinds of big acts, big names here in Nashville. And he'd be happy to work with you, too. Look him up at Wallace underscore Mitch on Instagram. Look up Mitch Wallace and the Digital Marketing Agency. We're going to get into it, guys. Episode 99 with my good buddy, Mr. J.D. Groover. Y'all are watching the In The Round podcast. J.D., how the hell are you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me. I know I said I would do this for like the longest time and just scheduling and I was like, hey, I'm home. Like, let's knock it out. I watched Dylan's and Screeches and I was like, I'm better than them. So like, let's get this out of the way and let's have your highest rated podcast so dude far. hell yeah and um you're you're on this on that similar kind of schedule to what i'm on uh where you're out on the road a oh, yeah. lot oh yeah doing the doing the tour manager thing the the ba- is it is it babysitting anymore or do you guys are they you guys been doing it for so long it's not even at that point no i mean like it's you know it you know i've been with john full time since i guess 2016 and so that's about six years of it and you know, there's such a, there's, you know, such a routine. Everybody's got, you know, you know, I'm engaged and everybody's got wives and all that kind of stuff. So the road is like settled down a lot, but it was never really, it's hard to call it babysitting when it's your best friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like somebody's got to be anointed in charge a little bit. Yeah. And it's kind of like, Oh, I like to play too. So yeah, you that's, know, that's but, how, that's how I am with our guys. Yeah. I like to get out there and play too. Now you guys are in a bus now, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a hybrid kind of bus thing it's not a, it's not a prevo but it's you know tommy cecil he's got this like conversion oh thing. yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. got 12 i mean you step on it and you think you're on a real bus and it's uh i mean it's been nice not chasing hotel rooms and i feel that you know like trying to you know you get into a city and sleep for four hours and wake back up and keep the drive going it's it's, it's nice to be able to pull into yep. loves or yeah dude loves are great what um what bunk are you in so uh i'm f- so we have the ability to have 12. We have 11 because we make condos because John Ooh, wanted a condo. Okay. So somebody had to take the top condo. And <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, you know, I think I've earned that one. So, yeah, so I'm a uh, front right condo bunk. Nice. It's nice. I've got two air conditioner vents because of where the bunks would normally be. Dude, you made out. That's yeah, great. Yeah, so I've got one that blows down and then one that blows in my face. It's fantastic. Yeah, dude. I mean, because you you guys did the van thing for a year, for a long time, right? Yeah, I'm a big proponent of that, especially with bands starting out. Uh, I mean, I, I you know, even WME asked me to speak. I spoke, uh, spoke on a panel for tour managers, and it was Tom, who was Dirk Bentley's tour manager, and Dylan Scott's guy, and... You know, I had no business sitting up there with Tom because he's like a legend. And yeah. Like he left Dirks and he's now a Weezer. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. So he's like, he knows everything. And then the one nugget of knowledge I brought was like, stay in the van as long as you can. You know, it's easy to go hop in that bus. But I mean, like Dylan Scott, Dylan Scott had a number one and then had like a top 10 before he even got into a bus because he wanted to be able to make some money and, and be smart about it. it you know, it's nice and it, it's a cool lifestyle, but... You know, there's something about vans, dude. Like, dude, there's times like when you're in there rolling, like with our crew. Sometimes we're rolling anywhere from eight guys to to ten guys, and we were doing that in the 15 passenger, the Trey's white van for for a long time. And even when I was with the Muscadine guys, they were in the Sprinter. But there's something about that that team camaraderie, everybody oh, yeah. being in it together on a long drive, going to New York or going to Texas or going on Bangor, Maine. Dude, you guys did Bangor in the van? We did Bangor. 
New Hampshire. Well, we did New Hampshire, Laconia, New Hampshire. Great little town if yeah. you haven't been. Uh, and then went to Bangor, Maine. And then it was 27 hours of driving. So it was like, it was brutal. So we decided, we left right after the show. It was an early show for college. We got done like, it was like 7 to 8.30. We had the van packed at 9. And we just rolled. I drove to like 6 in the morning. Drummer got up. He did from like 6 to 11. Bass player, 11 to whatever it was. And we were in Knoxville. And I was, I, I was conked out. I slept and yeah. woke up and got dinner and then went back to sleep and somewhere in Virginia and Stephen was our bass player Stephen Delush was like, All right, we're in Knoxville. I'm done. I'm like two and a half hours, let's go. I yeah. can do this. Got us home. It was like we left like Saturday at nine PM and got home at like Sunday eleven PM. That is impressive. We are without you, stopping like that. What's cool about our camp and what you know, I take pride in it, it is, you know, we've had a lot of people, you know, come and open for us and uh, I love teaching people how to tour. I love, you know, we took Dylan Marlowe out first and, you know, Mitchell Tenpenny, he's a guy we took out first and he's, you know, cr- he, sh- Mitchell's like the man. He's never forgotten, like, coming out with us and, like, me helping him and John helping him and yeah. he always shouts us out for that. And uh, that's something I love doing. That's why I love the stuff at Seagale, kind of, you know, watching, helping Jordan Fletcher and Jeb and all them get going like, okay, well, boys, this is a day sheet. Dude, and, Jordan's out on damn radio tour right now. I was texting <laughs> with him the other day. He is doing the damn thing. He's here today. He was in New York City yesterday or like the last three days. And then, you know, he hasn't gotten to ride a lot lately because he's always, if some of y'all know about radio tour, it's grueling and, and you shouldn't tour while you do it, which is, you know, it'll it'll save your mental health on that and just your tiredness. But, yeah, Jordan, uh, he poked his head in the office today, and I haven't seen him in person in months, I feel like. And uh, he was like, you know, he's the first guy I got to sign at Sea Gale. And a lot of that has to do with Charlie and Gary because yeah. – they were we were doing Rome River Jam. It was Old Dominion, Langston, Riley, Muscadine. It was supposed to be a uh, Job, uh, and Job's car broke down and couldn't come or whatever. So Jordan gets up there. I, he was selling merch, not using a hand cart, carrying these boxes yep. across his field, and uh, gets up there. <laughs> sound checks, goes back to merch. I'm like, who the hell is this kid? And uh, sounded great. Uh, it was my first year at Seagill, and, you know, Christian Bois, who owns the company, he was like, all right, it's time for you to go sign somebody. And I was like, if that guy's doing that, working hard, there's no matter, you know, there's no limit to his talent or what he's capable of. And so got to sign him summer of 2018, and he's been at Seagill ever since, got a record deal yeah. and uh, managed by George Corey. And, I mean, he's doing song to radio. He's got, like, 40 ads. And yeah, dude. It's a slow climb, but Dave Cobb's producing, which is kind of... Yeah, which is... That's a big fucking deal. So I'd got COVID in, like, the end of 2020 uh, real bad, and I kind of missed some stuff with Jordan, you know, as far as, like, George reaching out wanting to manage and the record deal and all this stuff, and he goes, yeah, Dave Cobb's producing. I said, like, when the hell did that happen? <laughs> And uh, it's been a cool experience for him, and you know, it's 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 so Jordan. If you know Jordan, if my mom was to ever get a divorce and be like, "Hey, I want to marry Jordan Fletcher," I'd be like, "I've got yeah. no, I've got no problem with that." Jordan, yeah. Jordan is the greatest human in the world, man. He's such a, he's such a like he's giving Ray Fulcher competition for that nice guy yeah, spot. Yeah, you know very, I mean? very much so. And so. that's and it's like that that whole crew. I mean, so you moved to town at what? When did you move to Nashville? Uh, into twenty sixteen. But I was coming back and forth a lot, you know, there's, you know, just from the bar and just pre-bar, I had a bunch of buddies up here and uh, just always been enamored by the city. And there was a bunch of, there was a bunch of people on my butt about moving up here and just taking the risk. And who who was the one that finally got you to do, what was, who was the the voice of the voice that was like, and you were like, all right, I'll finally do it. It was a combination. Uh, John was a big proponent of that. Um, You know, guys like Cole Taylor. Uh, Ray was one of them, Swindell, um, Carrie Edwards and Dustin Eichton over at KP management. Yeah. They were just like, you got to trust yourself. Like you have a great ear, uh, you work hard. And, and finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Like, let's go. And John was like, cool. You're going on the road with me. And, uh, I mean, he knew and Carrie, everybody knew that like, publishing is what I wanted to be at. When, whenever Cole, uh, Swindell told me about what a plugger was, I was like, 
oh, I'm in. You mean you, you sit in an office and you listen to music all day and then you text so-and-so and get them songs and get them on? I was like, that is like, there's no bigger dream for you, me. You had the one, speaking of plugging and stuff, um, that song Riley put out with Randy Owen, you were involved in that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fletcher wrote that with the Muscadine Boys and Ray. Yeah, and, the, and the, that was like one of, that was, I think, Muscadine's first Zoom right. That was yeah. like the very beginning of COVID. Yeah, and... Uh, Jordan did the work tape, and it's a beautiful work tape. He did it on his back porch. There's bird. It's a beautiful song. Uh, birds are chirping, and I'm like, dang. And I fired that off to a couple of people, Riley being one. Riley was the first person to hit me back, and actually he called me. You know, Riley's not a phone guy. He, he'll, he'll text back or whatever, and he called me. He goes, hey, this is the idea. And he was talking about the stagecoach plan, and uh, it was going to be called Stage Couch because they couldn't do it. And he just fell in love with the song and then uh you know riley knows i love country music and you know we you know we talk about that kind of stuff and i got a late night text from him one night he's like I remember exactly what he said but it was in the terms of like you ready to like shit yourself and i was like what and he sent it and had radio and some vocal on it and i was like what <laughs> is going on right yeah. now and, uh, I mean, if you just grew up like I did on, you know, the Alabamas and the Randy Travis and Keith Whitley and, and stuff like that, it, that was just kind of like one of those things is like, this is sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that was Jordan's first major label cut. It was, I think, the boys' first major label yeah. cut. So it was it was cool to do it with some guys that played down in Tifton. It was yeah. all kind of like a – Yeah, and that's what, I, that's what I was asking. Like, you come up in, in 2016, that's right around that that – point of like nashville's very much where there's like classes where like everybody kind of like i moved here 2018 i've got some some good friends that moved here around yeah. that same time and we all still kind of kind of keep in touch and, and work alongside each other and it's like that class that came in that 2015 2016 2017 a lot of those folks like the peachtree entertainment stuff the 65 yeah. south stuff it all kind of came up and it came through tifton as well with your time down there yeah i mean i uh I got to Tifton. I was working. I went to Valdosta State. Uh, Wasn't there a venue in Valdosta, too? Yeah, uh, Blue Water. But I've heard stories about that place back in the day. That was kind of like the sister bar to, to the gin in Tifton. And yeah. I worked at Flip Flops, which is like the number one college bar at Valdosta. It's just debauchery. Um, and uh, I, I hated school. Like, I was good at school. I hated school. I had three classes left. And they were like, hey, you want to go run this bar? I was like... Yeah, I've never even been to Tifton. Let's go. And, uh, you know, so get up there. We spend the first year trying to figure it out and learn that it can't be ran like a college bar because the college A back wasn't, like, that big of a size. Yeah. And started doing some national acts. We did FGL. Uh, we were, like, one of FGL's first shows. Like No shit. I, I did not know that. Yeah, it was uh, – yeah, did them. And then Parmalee during their number, first number one. And then the next week, like, Cruz went to radio. And blew up. And, like, there was only – I know how many people were there that night because I laugh. I still have the closing sheet. It's in it's in my house. And, uh, you know, there's, like, 142 people there, which isn't wasn't a lot for that room. And uh, 8,000 people swear they were there that night. <laughs> and then so that gave – with that song blowing up, that gave a lot of uh, validity to what we were doing. And, you know, we kind of partnered with WME and CAA and got those guys that were about to be on the highway. I mean – you you name it that from like if they blew up from 2012 to like 2017 they there's a good chance their first gig was with me you know their first real true i did party swindell uh i don't just everybody and, was, and, that, and that was back when it was in the back room right like you guys had the so we had so 2014 i got my hands on the building next door and I cut a wall and I put like this Lowe's double door, uh, not a real f like fire coated door. Or anything yeah, like oh, that. yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we uh, and we got that because we got Old Dominion the like two weeks before break up with them was like number one. So they were hot. Like they were, it was their first run on a bus. And and you know I don't know if you know Tommy Garris who does their uh, tour management, but he's he's a hell of a guy. And uh, yeah, and opened that room and. Ended up doing Cole Swindell and Langston and Travis Denning and Cadillac 3. And just, I mean, anybody you think of from that time, they ended up playing the bar, which was really cool. So, yeah. Is that how you met John? Was from, yeah. Uh, I met John. Uh, so, hit, one of his best friends, Tyler Horn, uh, 
grew up with him, and he was one of my fraternity brothers. Oh, no shit. And he was harping on me and the guy that did all the Valdosta stuff about booking him and booking him. We gave him a shot, and uh, he played me on a Saturday, and it was just acoustic. And uh, I think Forever Girl had been out for like a month or something, and or maybe a little longer than that. I'm not never sure. Yeah. And me and him just hit it off, man. Like, you know, he got done, and, I mean, he put some people in there. I was like, oh, damn, this, you know, he's got something going on. And uh, me and him just kind of talked and always hit it off and kept in touch, and, you know, and that was really it, man. He was, it was, it was a very natural, like, he doesn't need anything from me. I don't need anything from him relationship. I think that's kind of why we hit it off. And, dude, I'm so, I'm so thankful for Tyler Horn for, for that because, you know, he, John is literally – you know, my best friend, or, you know, if not him, you know, he knows who Stinky is. Stinky's the man. And, you know, it's, it's, I always have a tough time. Like, who's your best, like, I got a tough time with that. But, you know, John has definitely um, helped me out so much. And honestly, because of him, I've got to grow up here. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, John thinking I can handle the stuff, then, you know, I, I don't know what I'd be doing up here. Just, yeah. I mean, John gave me a lot of validity. Not to use that word again, but, you know, he kind of, you know, he was getting hot and he stuck his neck out and like, that's my guy. And he's always been, been that for me. So a lot of love for John, man. Hell yeah, dude. I'm proud, yeah. I'm proud of where he is and what he's doing and this new music he's got coming yeah, dude. Is, is next level for him. And I mean, it's, man, it's 2023 is going to be a huge year for John. So let's go. That, I, and, I'm, awesome. and I'm glad, I'm, I, you know, I'm glad I'm, you know, still doing doing the road stuff with him because there's that makes it easier yeah how do you balance the the working on working on music row doing the doing the publishing stuff and doing the tour manager stuff because i've learned that tour management is a full-time job like it's seven days like with advancing shows and yeah. all of that stuff there's always something going on with it that's a lot to balance how do you do it well i got a good crew um you know we've had some good production people uh right now ben grubbs is in charge he's our dude, he's our pm ben, ben is my dude grubbs is uh <laughs> grubbs is very talented and very uh organized and very detail oriented and very hungry and hungry and, yeah. he, and he cares he came yes. right right and, you know it's hard like think about the muscanine camp that's a hard camp to go into when those guys have been together for so long you know what I mean? And Ben just came in like he'd been there for like 10 years. You know what I mean? And he's just – he's a blessing to work with. Jason Harris was our previous guy, somebody I hired at 20. And as tw at 20 years old, he got to mix Gillette Stadium and <laughs> Ford Field and Absurd. all Absurd, yeah. Just all this great stuff that, you know, he got to do. And then, you know, he uh, he moved to town to do rock music, and the state champs hired him. You no know, shit. That's like his favorite band. Yeah, so yeah. it was like, well, okay, buddy, we understand. Yeah. And, but Grubbs has been such a blessing for us. And, you know, it's, it's, it's having good people around us, you know, with management too. I mean, they're, you know, they're supportive, but, you know, it actually helps me out because like, for example, we're either opening for the Luke Bryans and the Cole Swindells and, you know, the, the big acts like that. And, you know, I've got time to like hop on some buses and pitch some songs and, you know, technically when p other publishers are like, cutting their grass on the weekends or yeah. playing catch up. I'm out there double duty and our, you know, we have, you know, the Dylan Marlowe's and the Noah Hicks and, and the acts like that coming out and I'm getting hang time with them and, you know, learning what they like to do and what kind of music they're they're you know, what kind of songs they're lacking or whatever they need or just being, you know, one of my, one of my favorite things in town is I, I love, I got a few co folks that call me like uncle JD. Yeah. And I just love, you know, I'm not, I tell people all the time, like, you have to make yourself valuable. You have to become a Swiss Army knife in this town. Yeah. It's okay to be great at one thing, but when you're good at a lot of stuff or knowledgeable, like, oh, I need a pocket knife, boom, there I am. I need a screwdriver, boom, there I am. That is, like, the number one piece of advice I can give anybody in town is become as valuable as you can at many different things. And then as you're going through things, other things, you're like, okay, I know how to do this. Or I might not know how to do this, but – Matt Burrell does. So let me call him. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just I, make yeah. make yourself as valuable as possible. Become a Swiss Army knife. That is like my mantra in life, mantra, whatever. That's Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Georgia from mantras, yeah, mantra. And, you, and some of those guys that you just mentioned, I mean, you're you're a you're obviously a, a Georgia guy, Florida fan, but proud Georgia guy. I, um yeah. South Georgia shit, where you're gonna root where you're you gonna root for the Gators. And I'm sure you've gotten shit for that your whole life, but you've gotten to enjoy it too. The Gators had yeah. some good years. Yeah, my my whole life, uh Trader, all that stuff. I grew up <laughs> 
I grew up uh, on exit one in Georgia. I grew up 20 minutes from Jacksonville. We got all the Jacksonville, Florida stations growing up. My parents didn't care about college football or anything like that. Spurrier's putting up 100 points a week, and I'm like, I'm rolling with that guy. Yeah. And it was great for a long time. You know, it's been a little tough lately, but, you know, it's uh, – you, you could know. be a Florida State fan. It could be worse. No, not me. It could be worse. That's it what I'm could, saying. It yeah, could be worse. It, it you could, could be, be worse for the Seminoles. But um, you, a lot of those um, those um, young guys that you just mentioned, and it's cool. Like I've had them play. I had them. They were some of the original guys when were my uh, writers round yeah. over at um, over at Live Oak that I do. Like the Noah Hickses, the the Dylan Marlows, the um, the um, all the guys that are coming out of Tyler Chambers, Jay yeah. Team, Brian Fuller. There's all these kids coming out of Brian Georgia Fuller, right now. Dude. dude, he is about to flip people's heads I over. I like that kid a lot. I don't know if you know this, but uh, I had somebody back in the day, I was still in Tifton, reach out about Brian Fuller, and he was young, young. So this was yeah. 2016. Like He's young. Yeah. And I let him open up for like Cadillac 3 and like Travis Denny and a couple of guys, and I was like, man, this kid can – fucking sing got a hell of voice was, and at that point it was probably just raw, raw just, yeah. you know and to, and to watch him you come up here and go through it take his lumps take his losses and not like get deterred and just you know, I mean this this business will make you beat your head on on a brick wall absolutely and for him to like come through the other side of this and just i've been watching the videos and all that stuff like that you know just to watch him do what he's doing i'm, I'm uh, brian brian is a talent yeah and uh I'm, I'm very proud of you know i love i love my role in georgia music yeah i was gonna ask what is, what is it about georgia like what, what is it just is it the work ethic is it the the guys that have been there before like what you've what like what you've experienced with john with with the folks at, at kp and and luke and swindell and like is it the the next man up kind of thing where like you're helping or it's like you've got the folks and everybody kind of works together and there's like this fraternity almost of Georgia folks or what is it? I mean, it's, I don't think it's as deep as like people make it out to be. It's, you know, we all, we all kind of grew up the same, you know, it's, we grew up listening to Alan Jackson and then Brantley and then Luke and then like Outkast and Allman Brothers and T.I. Like there's just this mix of just melting pot. There's, I mean, if you go to the Georgia theater, they've got this Georgia state thing. It's got all these Ray Charles, like all these people from Georgia. You're just like, you grew up on so much different kind of things. And, you know, we root for each other. We're proud to be where we're from. And it's, uh, I mean, it's cool. I mean, even Corey Smith, you yep. know, that's, oh. a, that's a name people forget about. And like, he's, you know, he's kind of like a little godfather to a lot of this stuff. He, he you know perfected what I mean? the the building the college markets and yeah. just growing the circle around them. Yeah, Corey. I mean, Corey's a big influence on a lot of people down there, and and then watching you know buddies like you know Cole Taylor, you know, come up here and succeed as a writer and like get some number ones, and you don't have to you know be in front of everything. You can be a writer behind the scenes and, and really, you know, chase your dreams. I mean, shoot, he's got a cut on Luke Bryan and he's got so much stuff going on and to watch him like get married and have a family. And like, that's the kind of cool thing that I'm into right now is watch, you know, Travis Denning's about to get married and watch all these like people that I've met at 20 and 21 years old, shoot some of them 17, like Trey Landon, you yeah. know, like oh, yeah. just to watch them like turn into men and be, and be families and houses and like, get everything they ever wanted because they worked hard i mean like that's that's such a cool thing to watch honestly i know that's like sappy and probably not no. what you want to be here for but like dude no that's the truth though yeah. is you, you get to watch people grow and like you said like we're talking about brian like you go through those those um those peaks and valleys and to 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 keep going through that and yeah. be able to because in this life it's hard to have a family it's hard to find a good woman to settle down with which which you've got and yes <laughs> it's, it's very hard to find someone to put up with the shit that we do for work and so when you're able to find that and able to have a family and still do what you love here in yeah. this town where it can just eat you alive that's that's big shit right there yeah i mean it's it, shoot i got lucky i got the <laughs> best, best blind deaf girl in the world i don't <laughs> i don't know what i did but yeah. you know she you know and it, it's tough you know the touring is tough you know especially you know we dated in you know 2019 and then 2020 you know i'm gone and then 2020 closes up and then i'm home all the time and then when we went back out in 2021 it was a little getting back you i was ready to go i was, oh, like, yeah. I was like hey we like, all were we let's let's we are out let's go and uh you know that whole year at home brought us a lot closer together and i understand 
you know, everything's a two way street and, you know, that, that's made me a lot better of a person. And, you know, it, and it takes, you know, the moments away, you know, when I'm home, I take them a lot more serious than I used to. And, um, I got a good one, you know what I mean? So how'd you guys meet? Uh, was it tin roof? No, it was, it was, <laughs> it was we got, a, we got a cool, we have a crazy story. Uh, so we actually met at Red Door, okay. but but it wasn't like that. It wasn't like a Friday night out or anything like that. Uh, Cole had did his album release for the uh, All of It record, and uh, I had pitched two songs on that record, and uh, including All of It. And so everybody was at that Whiskey Jam album release party and stuff like that, and it just got too crazy. So I went across the street to Red Door, and uh, uh, she, Allie was there. I'd never met her, but she was hanging out with like Nudie and Lenny yeah. Wilson and Nathan Ford, a bunch of people that I already knew. So I just kind of like, All right, I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit. And I actually took her uh, took a group photo for them because there was I don't know what was going on why they were out like that, but uh, I don't know if it was like a going away thing or whatever it was. And then I was just like, man, this girl's beautiful. So I did a little sliding and uh, into the DMs. Hey, and, there you and, go. You know, what, but what's crazy is like when we're talking. Uh, I asked her where she's from. She says Seattle. I was like, oh, I love Washington. I've been to Seattle. I've been to Tacoma and Spokane and Bremerton. And she's like, Bremerton? Why are you going to Bremerton? I was like, well, I had a Navy base in my hometown. Everybody got transferred to that Navy base in Bremerton. So I've, I, we would go up there and visit my mom's friends and stuff like that. She lived in Bremerton, which is like as big as this room. Yeah. Which is like good for this room, but not like a city. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the odds of yeah. the odds of you having been to her hometown. Are, that's crazy. So we would stay with my mom's friend, Miss Patty. So we went up there. My first visit to, with her and her family and all that good stuff. Uh, we went to go see Miss Patty, and then we're driving by. And I was like, oh, that's where she lives at. Point four or five miles away from Allie's house is where I spent <laughs> all my time in the world by this boat launch. And, uh, it was all, it was just kind of like, okay, I'm, this was supposed to happen. Like, yeah, this is it. So went back up there and, uh, I, in Christmas time and proposed to her right there and I had Jordan Fletcher wrote, wrote the song I asked her to. And, her dad hitting the porta potty to take the picture. No shit. It's like a little park boat ramp thing. It <laughs> That's was awesome. Yeah, it was it was cool, man. Like it's uh, you know, and to, to have a rock like that uh in my life to kind of keep me grounded because you I mean, you know, the road can, you know, you literally barely have time to do the laundry to leave again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and having her for a couple of days always mellows me back out cuz when you're in charge of the ship, I mean, there's just so much logistics and personalities that can get involved and yep. you can have the best times or you could be stressed out, you know, like, like this past weekend, we were at the Georgia theater, which is like next to John's hometown. So it's friends and family. So oh, it's like, yeah. yep. it's a great night. Like it's, you know, it's a great night sold out all that good stuff. And, but you know what I mean? It's just, you're up and down the stairs all day and you didn't really sleep the night before. And, you know, but those are like, strangely enough, those are like the proud moments of touring yeah. when you just go, shit like that was epic you know yeah that's how that's how i felt going uh going to mobile with gary and charlie and how i felt this past year watching trey play at iron city in birmingham you know like that was a that was a big big like big deal like those hometown shows which i think that's actually where i met you and john for the first time was i filled in and sold merch for you guys yes we were we had an off night and that was when uh damon eat a dirt road had come out and, and, gary and, Charlie came and i out. hopped i hopped behind the merch table and was, yeah. sell, was selling that john langston merch yeah man yeah that was that, <laughs> that was, was that was night two of the two sold out shows back yeah. in 2019 yeah right before that was the last time we were there because 2020 was canceled and 2021 they were limited. Yeah, it was on, a weird weird yeah. thing over there. So. You you were also one of um me and McElwain's favorite spots. Um I believe over this this weekend or recently. Oh, Wild there. Greg. Wild Greg's, bro. Wild Greg is he is uh he is a character. <laughs> He's a one of a kind. He is a one of a kind man. Uh very uh generous, very on top of things as far as like hospitality, making sure we have everything security. We need. Just on to the po I've never seen many owners sit in the security meeting with me. Uh, oh yeah. Which was awesome. He's adamant about uh, that. but I mean he he rolls out a red carpet for us. We've we've done the Pensacola one twice and we've done the Lakeland don't, one. Don't you love that load in? You know we have to forklift stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. We we, yeah. we we go up through the we have the the forklift and do the elevator and do this and do that and yeah, yeah the Pensacola load in is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, so this was Grub's first time doing that and I was like <laughs> 
I was prepping them hard. Yeah. And uh, I think we got like a drum head smashed or something. Oh, <laughs> we had to go to Guitar Center and replace something. I don't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a cool thing he's got going because it's. I mean, there's so much stuff to go do. You can go to the beach. You can you know get, eat some good sushi at the Cons place right yep, there. Yeah. Uh, man, yeah. Well, have, have you done Lakeland? Yeah, we as did. Well, late we've so we've done all four of them with Trey. Is, yeah. Um, so we've done Austin, Texas, which yeah. that, that place is wild. And then his place in Minneapolis is wild too. Yeah. What I love about Wild Greg is he's a he's a freedom fighter. He'll go out there, he'll get he'll he'll be in the news, man. He is a regular. He told me he's on Fox News or Fox and Friends like every other week. He sends me the videos of it. He like texts me, he'll put he'll, he'll send it to me. Um and Trey in a group chat, and yeah. be like, look at me and Tucker, and it's him on Tucker Carlson talking about how he's suing all these cities over COVID mandates. Yeah, doing that, and he running for mayor or something. He yeah, was talking about. Yeah, he's running for town council in many in Minnesota. Has he told you about St. Gregory, his island? No. He has an island on the border of many Minnesota and Canada, where he's just got like it's like Greg's Island. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not shocked. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. He's Wild technically got a pilot's license too, yeah. so if you ever want to fly with him, you know, just <laughs> he, let him. He uh, we brought him to one of the Kid Rock shows, dude. He had a ball. He, I stepped in the foot in the door, and you were the first thing he brought up this time. He goes, "I didn't know you know Matt Burrell." I was like, "Oh, geez, yeah." He was like, "I, I love that guy. That guy's awesome." So yeah, he we, definitely loves you. Yeah, we've we've seen we've we've seen Wild Greg a lot. We always try to we he, he takes care of us. We take care of him, and our 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 um, our guys like to have fun with him after the shows. Yeah, we, he's, I, he's I wish we could have hung out this time. We had to we had. Eight hours to go to Athens. Yeah, so. that's the thing is getting all the way down there to Pensacola. There's no like super easy routing for it. But the Georgia Theater Show, I mean, like you were saying, I mean, that's what are so having like a big guest list like that. The hometown shows at the Nashville shows can be like those. Those to me are what stress me out as far as like guest lists and all that. When you got like friends and family coming, or you yeah. got you got cousins, uncles, brother. Like it's it just becomes so many people. What are some other like stressful spots? That you've kind of been in, just not even count, not even count like the guest list stuff, but like things breaking down, like shit, shit like that. Like over the years of, because I called you that one time, yeah. When we um we were driving, Matt going to remember this. We were driving um it was when the the chot the, the uh, wheel bearing blew out on the trailer. Buddy, that is the story of our lives. And we went and got the box truck, and we had to crossload everything to the box truck, go all the way out shit. to North Carolina for that mud bog. Yeah, that uh, we are uh. You know, knock on wood, this trailer has held up pretty good, but we we are known trailer killers. Uh, it's, I mean, there's there's been so much. I mean, it's the road. Like, literally everything that could happen to us has happened to us. Flat tires, you know, trailer wheel bearings going out. The very, like, the very first time that happened, was, we were going to Grizzly Rose. Oh, geez. Yeah, was, we've been out there, yeah. But John was on radio tour, so John, our drummer Scott and Brad – uh, we're flying in and we flew our production guy that time in. And so me and Steven were like, cause John, it was the first time at Grizzly Rose. John wanted to use our gear. He didn't want anything going wrong. Yeah. This is a big deal. It was like, before we left, it was pretty much almost sold out. And so we're, me and Steven were like, let's have a nice little man trip. Like let's leave Tuesday. My buddy is equipment manager for the Rockies. Like we were going to go like go to the game and go to bat and practice and do all this stuff. So we had, we head west, and uh, God, this story makes my skin crawl. It's like the worst time I've ever had on the road. So we're going. We stop in St. Louis for the night, and uh, we wake up. I was like, Steve, you ever been to the orange? She goes, no. I was like, let's go do that. So we take the van and trailer, and we park at 11 a.m. 11 okay? Time is very important on this. Okay. At 11 a.m., broad daylight, lunchtime, park in this brewery parking lot. Walk over, get an iced coffee, ride the little small thing up yep. with with some people from Green Bay or wherever they're from, do the whole arch thing. A great mandate. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a good mandate. Bro time. Yeah. We we get back. We were walking in the van. I was like, Steven had this camo hat. And it was on the ground. I was like, oh, dude, I must have kicked that out, man. I'm so sorry. Get closer. Somebody broke into our van. Stole my suitcase and backpack. Stole his suitcase and backpack. Four laptops are missing. Uh, his in ear in ear monitors. His his ears. Oh, geez. both pairs gone. All this stuff's gone. 
trailer intact because we have we have these mega locks on there. Yeah. Like you, I mean, you have to like weld this thing to get in there. Awful. No clothes, no nothing. Call police, make a report. We're sitting there for like an hour and a half. Finally, Steven calls back and goes, where are these people at? He calls the lady. The lady goes, oh, baby, we don't come out for, for petty theft like that. <laughs> this is St. Louis. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. And we're like, what the hell? So we're like, screw it. Let's keep moving. We stop in Columbia, Missouri, go to Hooters, have a beer, laugh Be- it all off. Best place for a beer. Yeah, <laughs> laugh it all off, get some wings. And we're like, all right, we can make the game tomorrow. Columbia to Denver is like 12 hours. Let's just go. So we're cruising, and all of a sudden, this I'll never forget it. It was a white Nissan Altima pulls up right next to us on the interstate on I-70. And, she, and she's like, fire, fire. And I look in the, uh, the side mirror, smoke everywhere. Get off of the exit in Concordia, Missouri. Ever heard of it? No. Neither have they. <laughs> I mean, small town. I mean, and we pull into the, it's like a TA, uh, but it's like a Missouri version of a TA. Yeah. They can fix it. But we pull in at 513. They close at 5. Oh, geez. So we drive slow across the interstate. There's a hotel. We're just going to wake up in the morning and figure it out. This day's in still had keys. Like not cards, keys. Oh, geez. Yes. We have no no stuff, no clothes, no nothing. So we drop the trailer, take the van twenty minutes away to the closest Walmart. Buy, you know, tell the boys they're gonna bring us all stuff. You know what I mean? But for the day, we get toothbrush, toothpaste, all. That. And I bought this Hawaiian shirt and some shorts and just had a field day and went to this little bar that's like really small called D's and just had played country music all night. Drove everybody out of there because they didn't want to hear that. Played pool. Get up the next day. Get on the road, everything's fixed. And then uh they have to put a new tire because the tire melted, you know how that goes. And yeah. And then uh the metal grate on the nose of the trailer started flapping because oh, the crosswinds geez. in Kansas are so bad. Yeah. Stop at a truck stop, gorilla glue, glue tape. I mean, it's a white trailer, <laughs> orange spackle tape everywhere. We're just laughing. And then uh we are an hour outside of Denver. If you ever made that drive, literally there's signs that say free land if you put a business on it because that's just how out of the way you are. Yeah. Driving, pop. And I look at Steven, I was like, if that is the new tire that they just put on today, you will never see me as mad as I'm going to be. Get out. Is that new tire? And I didn't even get mad. I laughed like a crazy person. And so, you know, we carry a spare and a jack and all this in the trailer. Guess where the trailer keys were? In my backpack that was stolen in St. Louis. Oh, Lord. So the boys had just kind of landed. I call Scott, our drummer. is like, hey, I'm going to call you an Uber. It's about an hour away. This is what's going on. So he gets there. You know, the Uber driver didn't want to take him, obviously, because it was like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. AAA wouldn't come out. That's how far away we were. So he gets there. He unlocks the trail. I mean, I was like a NASCAR pit guy. Like I just, I never changed a tire that fast. And Scott, God bless him, was like, "Hey, you want me to finish this up?" I said, "No, get in the effing back. Like I'm finished in this drive. Get the hotel, toss the keys. I was done." So then the next week, everything goes fine. The rest of the week, we get back. The next week, uh, we're playing in Minnesota. Have an off day to get to one of those country concerts in Ohio. I wasn't. I think it was Country Fest. I don't. Yeah, know. one of their big festivals. Yeah, yeah, they've got like four, and they're all called Country something. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just Ohio uh, yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> and so we have an off day. We have this great day plan. We're going to spend it in the in the dales of Wisconsin. Go to water parks and just have a have a time, kid. You know. Yeah. Raining a little bit. Boom. I'm like, oh, I got this. Changed van trailer or van tire went out. Changed it going. Going down, we got music, you know how it is, music's blasting, everybody's having a good time. We're thinking about tomorrow. Scott goes, y'all smell that? <laughs> no, look in the side mirror. Smoke everywhere. We had lost both tires to the trailer. Okay. We only had one, so we had to call a tow truck. Guy's first day on the job. Oh, Has geez. a flatbed. We had to 
put it up there. Our bass player, Steven, had work at a tow company in college. He put it up there because a the guy couldn't do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we go. We have him drop it off at Walmart. Ooh. We're going to get two new tires and screw it. So put us in this hotel. Uh, got us in this hotel. I stayed up till 530 whenever the tire center opened up. Went to Walmart. I think got, the guy was like, cool. Uh, it'll be done probably in an hour. So I take the van. I go back. Get a shower. By the time I'm out of the shower, guy goes, hey, you need to come back up here. We can't do this. Oh, no, no. Excuse me. I forgot. I had to drive 45 minutes to get the tires because they didn't have them at, like, the Wisconsin Tractor Supply or whatever that, that thing's called. So I bring them back. I'm like, let me know when it's done. Be about an hour. Get a shower. He goes, hey, man, we're not going to be able to do this. I go back up there. I was like, Steven, wake up. Steven just falling asleep. I felt so bad. But Steven's like my little partner in crime on the road. He's, like, so handy. And uh, we go up there. We can't do it. The axle's bent. They bent in. I'm like, what? Because I don't know what to tell you, man. So we have a show still. So, all right, I'm going to get a U-Haul trailer. Guess where the U-Haul place was? 45 minutes away next to that tractor supply place. Oh, geez, you go all the way back. Go all the way back, <laughs> get this trailer, get everything in there. Our risers don't fit. Our drum riser doesn't fit. And it was like this cheap thing we found on Craigslist anyways. So we leave it there. We left this trailer just in Wisconsin. <laughs> That was all in a two week span. I was I was Jeez. so aggravated. Yeah, but. yeah. I haven't run into anything quite like that. We've gotten into some gotten into some some stuff on the road with. We actually one of our experiences. It was actually in Georgia. It was in um, in Milledgeville. Yeah, somebody slashed our uh, trailer tire. Mm-hmm. In Milledgeville, they, they that that to me is one of the rat. Like I love going to Georgia because yeah. the crowds are always great. When I was selling merch, they buy a ton of shit. Awesome, very welcoming people. Yeah. Very, we have a lot of fun in Georgia. What is what? I mean, you might be biased towards Tifton, but like for you, of all those college towns that are down there, there's like there's Tifton, Valdosta, Statesboro, Athens, Milledgeville. Like, which one for Rome? Like, which one for you is like? How would you rank them? Sadly, if number one overall is 2004 to 2009 states or 2012 Statesboro. So Statesboro before anywhere change, but that time. That was, I mean, it was like the number four party school, and like Playboy. I, I put Statesboro up there now. Yeah, I mean, you know, sadly, a lot of stuff has changed. I mean, Valdosta had a great reputation because of Remerton and had the strip of bars. Uh, I mean, we kind of put Tifton on the map a little bit with our place. Millersville is always fun. Um, I mean, Athens is just – Athens is the best college town in the whole country. And I'm a Florida Gator fan. Yeah, Char- and I, Charlie and Gary say that too, and they're Auburn boys. They say Athens is their favorite college there, town in the there country. Is noth- there is nothing greater than a Saturday, a Friday night show in Athens, and a day off, or yeah, a Friday night show in Athens and a day off Saturday. When there's a game on, a game coming to town that, I mean, that town becomes like the fourth biggest town in Georgia with everybody yeah. coming in there. I mean, there's so many great bars uh, and so much good food and so much, like, it's just an energy, man. Lots of fun to be had. Yeah, I mean, it's it, Ath, Ath, Athens, Georgia. And I openly say that as a Florida fan. You can't touch Athens, Georgia. No matter how hard you try, Athens, Georgia is the best college town in the whole country. So take that out of it, then it'll probably be Statesboro. See, I like, I like going out to the Midwest and doing some of those college towns. Like, have you done Manhattan, Kansas? No, we haven't. But we did Ames, Iowa, and that place is rowdy. <laughs> Manhattan, Kansas, bro, yeah. they do dollar wells. I used to do that. that Do- was... Dollar dollar wells the whole the whole time. So yeah. which sounds very Tifton thing to do. It sounds yeah. like sounds like sounds like Tifton. Um, but Manhattan, Kansas, where Kansas State is, they yeah. have a strip called Aggieville where like the hat is the venue right on the end and then it's like fifteen, twenty bars, all dollar wells all night. Uh-huh. And it's just rowdy kids that yeah. like to like to like to fight and Fuck and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, Ames Ames was fun. For, What's Ames? That Iowa State? Yeah, Iowa State. They were they have like a Back to the Future theme bar down there. Oh shit, that's kinda, cool. We opened for like Jana Kramer at some like out <laughs> like downtown outside yeah. amphitheater thing. Like they held like three or four thousand people or whatever it was, and it was a block away from all the bars. So we sound checked and went to the Back to the Future bar because I love that's like one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I had good. Good time in Ames, Iowa. Then we ended up going to this country bar, and I never hand on Bible. I never had a bush light in my life. And somebody bought me a beer, and I was like, Phew. you know, I'm 30. I'm, I was older than 30 then. I was like 32. I was like, I can drink a Miller Lite. You know what I mean? And they're like, no, this is like what you drink here. I'm like, all right. 
turned up a bush light and I was like, all right, I, I get it. Cause like it, before bush light natty was like the thing. Yeah. But to date myself even older, Keystone was the first beer to sell a 30 pack. Yep. And it was $7 and 98 cent. Shit, yeah. you know, this is 2004, five, six when I was in college. And that's what we drank. And very, very down rare. in Georgia, you guys were even drinking Keystone in thirty packs because of that. That was the only reason. It was natty, you know. If you had a little bit of extra coin, but it was the thirty stone, key, and it was. I mean, dude, I, it's so bad. Yeah, like, I, I used to drink Keystone, but that's a north. That's like yeah, growing up, growing up in New York, like in the Northeast, you have all the Pennsylvania. Used to drink a lot of Labatt or Labette, however you want to say. Oh, we yeah. said all the Canadian beers, Canadian Molson. Dude. Yeah, we get Molson's, Molson's really good. Yeah, yeah, we used to, Yingling was a big one, Lion's Head, all that. All that stuff. I was when I was in college. Yingling wasn't even sold in Georgia yet. You had to damn. go down to Florida or like I, I did a uh, ultimate frisbee. You were an ultimate frisbee guy. Uh, I my buddies were so I was like, yeah, I'll go to this trip. You yeah. know, what I mean, and play a little bit. I scored a point on Georgia. No big deal. Hey, there uh, you go. But uh, yeah, so we went on this thing. We brought like three kegs of it back because it wasn't in whatever. <laughs> it's good and, beer. And we had we had built two kegerators like in our garage out of old fridges. So we just put them in there, and then uh, our buddy had the bar, and we put the other keg in that bar and kept it cold until we were ready for the other one. It was awesome. Hell yeah, that is awesome. What's the wildest gig you've done with John? Like, what or wildest, and then like most obscure? Like, because I'm sure you guys have done the the mud bog thing and like the private party thing, and like you've been to some interesting, fair, like weird kind of stuff where it's different. Uh, we just did our first round of mud bogs this year. It was ju- just this year. Yeah, yeah. Really? It's, it's something we've never really done. We did one in Arkansas, and then we did one somewhere else. I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, did you do the one in um, Louisiana? Did you do Louisiana or Butler, Georgia, or any of those? No. No? No, not in Georgia. I don't – man, I wish I remember what that was. And those are tough days because you're in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Oh, yeah. We did about 10 of them last year. Those so we, the, we do them, but they, they just they pay well. Those guarantees on those mud bogs are out the they, ass. They pay well. They treat you right. I mean, that's all you can ask yeah. for. It was definitely different because the first one, they have this big area marked off for people to put chairs and stand and all that stuff. And everyone sat on top of their four wheelers outside of the square. Yep. Yeah. So it's like you're playing to like a crowd. Like the crowd is like the outer yeah, circle. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, John. It, John's a, one of the best entertainers. Like oh, in he's our, flying in, around in our genre. I mean, those guys didn't have a choice but to get up by that stage. We're tossing yeah. beers out like they didn't have. A, that's where. That's where John wins, man. I, I stand by that. John is the best. Or at least one of the best, like pure stage live guys yeah. in our genre and our format. And he just, I mean, he gets off stage. He's just dripping. Sweat. Oh yeah, you know, he's like he's got football mentality and like that's. I mean, there's never a dull moment at our shows for yeah. that. So. Speaking of never a dull moment, another a place we got to say R.I.P. Slide and ride. Slide and ride. Martin, Tennessee. Yeah, that was uh, we. That was our last show before COVID. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. I was there with uh, Ethan Willis. Yeah. Yeah. That was our last show before COVID. It was, uh, yeah, that's, I didn't know they, I just recently learned that they closed that down, but in there, they moved to Jackson, right? They opened the second location in Jackson okay. and that one has Pookie and those guys yeah. have live bull riding in that venue. There, there's bulls in that venue. Oh my god! So it's not you ride the bull; it's you watch people so ride it, the it, bulls with helmets on. Yeah. So, so it's 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 Tennessee Billy Bob's. Yes, Tennessee Billy Bob's in Jackson, Tennessee, in a small area. But we we did a show trade because I had, my first time the slide and ride was with um was I went out there twice with Ethan Willis, which was when he was opening with for you guys, um and then I did one with Muscadine, and then I did one with Trey. The one with Trey was like January of 2021. Yeah. So it had just come back, and that I'd never like because I had seen it packed with with um, going to see going to see John there, but slide and ride like when you like those small towns, man. When there's yeah. there's that energy of those like that like eight hundred to like eighteen hundred, if you're being generous, cap yeah. room. There's nothing like the energy in those small town kind no, of rooms, man. No, man. Those... In Martin, Tennessee, those people got after it. Yeah, they are rowdy. That club level, man, is infectious you know what i mean it's just like they're small thousand cap rooms and everybody's right up on you and it's just i mean there's so many places that i genuinely love like 
and God bless John for, you know, letting me be a part of this. And I've got to see so many different places and cities and yeah. stuff, places I never imagined. You know, I'm from, you know, a little town in Georgia. I never thought I'd get out of there. And, you know, John is taking me around the world and, you know, to Canada and Mexico and all these cool places. And you get to go to these legendary spots like, you know, I don't have a list of my fa- – I know where I like going. You got to have a top five. Yeah, it, but it's so hard to even say that out I mean, loud. Billy Bob's is on there. Yeah, but it's – because, like – I know you build relationships with the yeah, folks that work at the yeah. venue. Like, like like I've got with Wild Greg or, like, yeah. I've got with, with the folks at um at Coyote Joe's and the Blind Horse Saloon in yeah. Greenville. Like, like Coyote, jo- Coyote Joe's is on my list because as a tour manager, it's an easy day. Heidi is, like – Yep. On top of everything they all day. They got lunch there for you when you uh, show the, up. The it, sandwich bar. The sandwich bar is the Phenomenal. best. The prime veggie trays right there. They give, hook it up with the barbecue in the green room. Yeah, those like, wings green. and mac yep. and, shit. And, the, and the peanut butter pie, dude. Like, peanut butter pie is great. Yeah, yeah, Coyote Joe's is high on my list. Uh, Rick's in Starkville just because yep. Rick, Rick is like. He's OG, man. He's the man. Man, there's, I mean, Rick during COVID texted and checked on me. You know what I mean? Like, Rick's just like. Yeah, he's got a business and he's in it for the business, but at the same time, he like actually cares about the humans in it. And yeah, you know, we show like we'll always try to get there before they close the next night or the night before because we, we Rick will come sit up there and have a beer with us. And you know, so Rick's for sure. Billy Bob's is you know obviously you know like the premier. Like when you get to headline that back room at Billy Bob's, you like. Okay, things are going the right way. Shit right means now. something because you know they Texas doesn't care about what we do up here half no. the time. And very for, true, you know, for for Robert Gallagher to like, you know, handpick John and be like, "Hey, like, you're up," and he let us play two times in like five months. Yeah, which is a huge deal. And he put us on the same night Cody Johnson was in town, and we still did damn good number in yeah. there. And that, that just shows the love that he has. Uh, if you ask the band as a whole. Because everybody likes different things. I'm just talking from a tour manager aspect. Yeah. You know, because Coyote Joe's and Rick, everything's laid out. Uh, and Joe, know. Joe's on weed? Oh, Ed is a man, dude. Ed is. There is only one Ed Worm. Yes. There, the, <laughs> Ed is a, uh, you know, Ed took a shot and let Jeb open up for Corey Smith. And, you know, that's what Ed does. Ed, Ed's kind of like Rick, but he's just the Chicago Rick. You yep. know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I mean, there's just so many, like. If, but you, if you ask the band as a whole, because everybody's top five are different, you yeah. know, the Blue Note in Columbia, Missouri is on everybody's top five. I've heard so much about that place. I haven't gotten to go there yet, and I'm hoping we get there at some point. It's an old theater. Um, the load-in is easy. It's the back door's right at the stage. Um, pro- their production crew's on top of everything. Hospitality management's on top of everything. It's right in the middle of downtown, which is now SEC country. Yep. So it's an SEC school, and they got this coffee bar next door with, like, the best Vietnamese coffee, iced coffee I've ever had in my life. Like, I I had one, and we, we didn't have a merch seller then, so we got the venue to sell. And I know after that, I went in there and went 100 miles an hour explaining this, and I had to, like, stop and go, hey, I'm sorry. Let me slow down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, like, in the if you sell it out, so we – we played it three times, four times. We sold out three. The first time, they were only going to open the bottom part. But John did so well, they had to open up the upper deck. And even the guy was like, hey, man, I, I don't know who you guys are, but, like, let's do this shit again. Sold it out three times. They give you a little trophy. It's a microphone that says, sold out, fuck yeah, on it. And like, oh, so, shit. So That's John, awesome. John kept the first one. He gave me the second one, which is in my office at Seagill. <laughs> and then Carrie Edwards has one as well. And it's just like, I cannot wait to go back there in november like that's just one of those places you walk in it's the same white guy it's the same production yep. and, and it's you're just hugging like hey give me yeah it's good to see you again and we haven't been there since we played february 2020 right before it shut down we played on my so, birthday weekend and, so you're due to go you guys do have a date coming up yeah we're doing uh midnight rodeo in springfield and then uh saturday november 12th wherever that is uh in Columbia, and I cannot wait. So it's that. a Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be big. Yeah, and Missouri's out of town, so it'll be. Yeah, that's that, that is the the place to be. Yeah, so we're 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 pumped for that. Fuck but, yeah! But like, yeah, there, I mean, there's so many. Like, 
I don't want to offend anybody when I talk yeah. about that because I've done that before and like I left out Rick's and Rick's like <laughs> sending me a sad face and I'm like, <laughs> dude, like I'm so That's sorry, funny, like yeah. I got put on the spot, but yeah. like yeah, I mean Rick's, Coyote Joe's, Billy Bob's, Blue Note. Have you Joel. done tumbleweed in Stillwater? No, we have not played I, in Oklahoma. That is, tumbleweed in Stillwater is one of my favorites. We're going out there next week for yeah. uh, the Outside City Limits Festival and they always take such good care of us and yeah. they it's that place and it's like you said it's funny going out to red dirt country because it's just it's different yeah you know and it's it's cool when you're with a nashville act that gets to go out there and gets to do the the because the south the the south the nashville crowd and the texas crowd are very different yeah if they like your shit in texas sometimes they're just dancing in a circle to it they're swing dancing to <laughs> it if they like that or they're up front and rocking like you're in like you're in tifton and they're, yeah. in the, they're in the front row and they're rocking we like it when they're when they're rocking or i think our, our guys at least do you know it, it was a little odd the first time and you got people to step in and twirling around the dick down in dallas you know yeah <laughs> yeah it was definitely you know we had we had played billy balls with cole before you know they don't typically let openers but they bought the tour package and we were on the tour and uh to see him sit down at tables was yeah, like the picnic table thing tripped me out the, the first craziest time. thing and so when we got in there i made a joke was like so uh, we moving these tables out tonight. And Robert goes, "No, oh, you ain't earned that yet." And I was like, <laughs> "All right, dude." <laughs> so, but no, I mean, there's so many. Like I said, I'm I'm so grateful to you know that I got a best friend like John who like lets me do this and is so understanding about like my other goals and my other passions and my other dreams. Like as far as you know, the publishing stuff and uh, my boss Chris Dubois. Um, for those who don't know, Chris Dubois has got fucking hits. the def definition of a heavy hitter hits. such a heavy hitter that he has his own publishing company yeah <laughs> he's got hits i mean like yeah all the brad paisley stuff you love he wrote buy me a boat he just got a number one on you should probably leave he, did he have some carrie underwood stuff too uh i, I think he's on one okay. with kelly lovelace okay. um but no he's i mean dude and he's he's such a professional writer like it's like he cares about he's just not in there to bust a song out and leave like he and developing talent yeah. it seems like is a big thing going on at seagull right now with the roster you guys have and how it's growing and yeah. seeing artists like like jordan and jeb doing their thing and everett and different yeah. people coming up you guys aren't just just looking for people to write songs you're looking to grow people into yeah. well, talented that's, writers and artists well that's i mean that's where we're heading nowadays with just you know the way publishing's working. Um, it's a tough business to be how in. How big was that that news that came out yesterday? Uh, the the, the fifteen yeah. percent. I mean, it's going from what like seven something. I mean, you're, you're getting double, which is not great, but it's a it's a good start on it's where a big we're going. St big step in yeah, the fight. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the, every every little thing counts. I mean, these song there's no songs without songwriters. Yeah. You know what I mean? The quality. Is, there's so many people who can tell stories better than some of the artists can write you know what i mean and that's and that's okay like it's so i love when people are comfortable enough to take an outside song and and realize what a good song is i mean like the house that built me would have never seen the light of day if you know there's no artist on that you yeah. know or you know so i i love pitching songs it's like it's it's hard because it's 99 percent no's yeah and you gotta like navigate those waters because like you, you you know you get to know a song like lynn hutton is one of the writers i get to work with Guys, another another heavy yeah just, yeah he's just eric, talented. eric church cuts nobody gets eric church cuts no. and he's got you know he wrote uh uh jack daniels kicked my ass again last night and then uh that was a cold one yep two of his bigger songs yeah. and you know and you get to work with him and then get to meet you know his wife tammy and see what like cuts and stuff mean to them you know what i mean because that's how they make their money and how they're you know surviving and then so you care a lot more you know what I mean? You become invested. Yeah, man. Like, I, like you know, I want to get Lynn another number one. Like, I want to stand on stage and I want to introduce him to the town and be like, hey, suckers, like, Lynn Hutton right here, you know? Like, I mean, and he's doing well. He's he's going to be on the Laney record. He's all over the Jameson Rogers stuff. He's got a cut on John. And, how, many, how many calls are you making a day plugging? Uh, it varies. I mean, like, there's a lot of calendar work that goes into it, which is I'll openly admit, not my strongest That's suit. Ad admin kind of stuff for your yeah, just booking right. yeah, yeah, just booking rights and stuff like that. But you know, I get a lot of my cuts through my artist relationships. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't send nine hundred songs to an artist because that just gets overwhelming and 
it's like I'm trying to sell them something. Yeah, they're not going to open. They're going to see 900 songs and be like, I'm, like, I'm not opening this Dropbox. Yeah, I'm but, not opening this file share. But when I send something, I just – they know and I want them to know if in case they don't know. It's like I put a lot of time and thought into actually sending that song. There's plenty of songs I would love to send, but I've literally thought about it long enough, listened to it at least you know five or six times and been like, all right, this – this is it you know what i mean and I, i'm i'm grateful for the opportunity and you know and to work with you know everybody over at seagull i mean I, the 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 two girls i say ladies um that work with me um kim wiggins who has been in the business for a while kim is awesome she is she's great man kim wiggins is, is a pro's pro um i've learned so much from her f with with her time there she got there a year after i did and uh she knows how to navigate me when I'm like upset or like I, you know, I'm feeling a certain way about something. She's like, she's got enough experience in the business to like, hey, like calm me down or you know, or like guide me through any kind of situation. I'm very grateful to have Kim on my side and uh, Emily Craig, who's married to Adam. Yeah, um, she started a couple of years ago, and to watch her grow and you know, sign people now and like just, just man, I'm. It's it's a good company. Kendra Smith. Yep. Was, oh yeah. Kendra was my intern. Or I say my intern, our intern, and uh, now she's our catalog manager. And uh, Brandon Greg, who's our. You got a great team. Over yeah, there. man. Like, really I just do. want to make sure I said everybody's yeah, name yeah, because, yeah. like, I genuinely, <laughs> I genuinely, genuinely love that place. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we're getting done right now, and I'm just excited to see such a small independent grow the way we're growing with all these artists you know like you said so. yeah i was gonna ask being a part of an independent thing but also you with your background like you're in a way like i came up doing radio stuff i don't have this this music business fancy belmont degree Neither nikki do t I. doesn't have it either do I, a lot buddy. of my friends that that are doing shit in town right now don't have that and to me, it, it, it could be the, the New Yorker in me where it's just the, the, the hustling and like kind of having a little, little chip on there where yeah. it's like, I'm, 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 I'm proud to be doing this and not have the, I call it the B word, the, the Belmont degree. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like that, that a little bit. Do you have that kind of thing? And, and do you have that being, being in it, being with an independent publisher like Seagale? Like, no, that's what that we, underdog mentality kind of thing? No, that's, I mean, we get all our interns from there and there's a lot of good kids. I mean, you know, CJ Solar was an intern for yeah, us. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I know, know there's a lot of good stuff out there, but I feel like just. No, I don't really, you know, there's, there's, there's many roads that can get you to Walmart. You know what I mean? There's many yeah. paths and mine was a dirt road. You yeah. know what I mean? And, that, and that's the way I look at it. And, you know, like everybody that's, everybody moves to this town for a dream. And who am I to, and I'm not getting on your shit or yeah. nothing, but yeah, no, no, I gotcha. like, you know, some people got put in a better situation yeah. than we did. Not their fault. Yeah. Let them chase their dreams. Like Graham, uh, he just dropped us on it. Preachers and people. Yep. Uh, people need preachers need people like me. He's my intern. Yeah. Cool shit. Never would have met the kid if he wasn't the intern. Yeah, if he wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know. It's, that's I don't get into all that because I didn't I, I didn't live here long enough or like you know what I mean? Like yeah. that doesn't rub me the wrong way. I just you know you're gonna work hard regardless. If you work hard, you're, you're straight. Work with hard, me. good shit happens. Yeah, you it work hard and you're a nice. And you're a good. You're a good person. Yeah. That doesn't matter if you went to you know Phoenix online or <laughs> or Belmont. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if that's the path you had to take. Like I know that was probably the most redneck things I've ever said. But like, <laughs> but you know everybody's trying to get to Walmart. Yeah. But you yeah. know I just had to take a dirt road. Everybody else got to yeah. take the freeway. Now two Nashville institutions. You were you had a lot. Of, you've had a lot of involvement in, and I know because of you posting about them and stuff. Daddy's dogs, yeah, man, and Tin Roof. How important are both of those things to you? Because they are Nashville staples, and you got to kind of you when you moved to town. They were kind of still coming up. They weren't what they are now. Yeah, I mean, Sean and Andrew at Daddy's Dogs. I mean, that. So when I moved up here, you know, I had to find something. I didn't want to get back in the bar. Uh, had plenty of opportunities to bartend and do some other stuff, and I was like. If I get back in that bar, I'm not getting back out. Yeah. It's, it can be a trap. And uh, I had to find something to make it so I didn't blow my savings or nothing like that. And uh, Sean and Andrew hired me at Daddy's Dogs, and I would work outside of Losers on, like, Mondays and Tuesdays. What a networking opportunity. That oh, is where you meet everybody. Dude, I would have, I shit you not, 
Megan Patrick, Farron Rachels, Lainey Wilson, all that whole group of people. That girl gang, yeah. Would come and sit on the coolers and play me demos and just hang out with me. And, you know, Megan would bum dips off me. And, you know, <laughs> and it was uh, sneak me beers and stuff like yeah. that. You know, sorry, Sean. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, you know, it was it, that, you know, that can get misconstrued from the outside of like, look at that guy. Look what he's doing that, you know it's selling hot dogs and stuff like that. But you know what, man, like it enabled me to stay here and enabled me to go on the road on the weekends. And it kind of made me tougher to the nose a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And Sean, Sean tour managed El King for a little bit. Andrew played, I think with Mickey Guyton a little bit on guitar. And so those guys have toured and they're in the music business. So they understood it. So when I had, you know, I'll tell you this, I got my job at Seagill. Uh, man, it was, it was crazy. I was actually working at Daddy's Dogs when I got the call. Uh, I had taken a meet with Mark Driscoll, who was our VP, and then did one with Chris. It was a dinner, and then I didn't hear anything. And I'm like, and I've been trying to get into publishing. I met with some companies, and I was like, "You're an idiot. Why did you leave Tifton? You left a gold mine. You, you know, you had such a good thing going. Well, you, and it was. I'll never forget. It was uh, uh, the Winterfest in Centennial Park." And I had to get out there early because the festival opened at 10. So I had to, like, go to the old daddy's dog's house, get the cart, load the coolers. The girl didn't show up because it was December 1st. It was snowing. It was 12 degrees. So I was out there by myself setting this tent. And me and God were like, we were going at it. <laughs> that was that was one of the few times me and, me and God had a, come on, bro, like, meeting. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, you moron. And just so down on myself. I'm not selling any hot dogs till lunchtime. So I'm out there from like seven to 12 freezing. Uh, God bless Sean for having these little heaters yeah. uh, that are not <laughs> enough. And then Saturday, it was a Saturday phone rings, Mark Driscoll. And I was like, it's like, hello. He goes, Hey man, you busy? I was like, no, nah, man, what's going on? He goes, Hey, so, uh, you know, we've met and, uh, we want to offer you a job for, you know, X amount of money and full benefits and all this stuff. You interested? I said, buddy, you could have had me for nothing. You're an idiot. I would, I would have took this job for free, and called Sean. You know, I called my folks and I, you know, called my buddies and and John and everybody and let them know what was going on. And then called Sean and Sean was just like, man, I hate losing you, but like, this is it, dude. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Sean texts me once a month, every other couple months. And Sean's big daddy. It's his yeah. face on everything. Yep. Yeah. And dude, he's been such a support system and such a good thing for this town. And he gets involved. So I try to do everything I can for him, hook him up with contacts. Or remember, remember the concerts they were doing during COVID, the, the drive up yeah, things, man, yeah. that was, those were, yeah, we did one. C. Gill did yep. one of those, and you know, I love. I got a lot of love for that. Even like they're hiring right now. I reposted their hiring. I saw thing. that. Yeah, just because like you never know who's going to see that, and there's no there's no shame in working hard to to get by. You know what I mean? And, but I fully embraced it. Like I posted videos of me cooking hot dogs. Like I just <laughs> loved it. I didn't. You know, it's not a serious job, but like the cause is serious. It's good for Nashville, and yeah, you know, it's a staple, dude. Yeah, and you know, Tin Roof is just. Tin roof, tin roof, man. Like, that's just, you know, that's the spot. Hey, I don't need a job, but I love daddy's dogs. So <laughs> Dude, I'd, I'd go well, work there just to get some free hot dogs. Well, I'll tell you this, man. They pay well. Plus, you got drunk people tipping you. I mean, dude, I don't want to, like, because I don't know if it's changed hourly or not. So I don't want to say that. I'll tell you later. But, like, that hourly was nice, dude. And oh, then, I can imagine. And then people don't they actually, have a spot down on. It's uh, I think I had it down on Printer's Alley. Yeah, they they yeah. open. They're all over the place now. When I when I was getting started with them, they were opening up the nations. So I was in there like helping paint and cleaning and uh, installing like whatever they need, or building shelves and stuff like that. And man, uh, and then they opened Printer's Alley. And man, I'm. I love that company, dude. It's, I used to get hot. So my, my first job in town, I was a I was a bouncer on Broadway. That was my way of staying here. You bounced? I, moved, I was a door guy at Whiskey Row. Oh, man. I was a Broadway Broadway guy. Not I was never. And I was there for a year, but like similar to your kind of story where I was like, there were nights where I was like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. I don't want to be working the Saturday night when the Eagles are coming into play against the Titans the next night, and I'm yeah. just fighting dudes from Philly all night. Like, yeah. I don't. It ain't worth the fifteen dollars an hour and the door money, but uh, but that's how I met I met Tyler who is um he's doing um now he's tour managing and production managing for Gary and Charlie yeah and that was how I got the Muscadine gig was by again just 
just you're in that. And I had a lot of moments like that where I was like, am I an, am, am I an idiot for leaving New York and New Jersey for yeah. coming down here? Yeah, but man. it's like again, the, you got to do what you got to do to stay in town. There's a it's important. There's a writer. Yeah, I say a writer because I want people to know he's a great writer. But yeah. uh, Swindell's guitar player his name's Joel Hutzel. Yeah. And oh he, yeah, I know Joel. And Joel is a guy like I was talking about moving up and stuff like that. And he looks at me one time and goes, "Buddy, you can't win the game if you're not there to play it." And hey, I'm man. like. All right, Joel, fire me up one time. Let's go. <laughs> you know, so I always I always tell people Joel says that. That's one of my other big things I like telling people is, and I let people know that Joel said that because he's right, man. If you're not here, to, if, you, if you're not here to play the game, you can't win it. And you know, eighty four people. It's probably more than that. Eighty four people uh, move here a day. They want your spot. They want my spot. Yeah. They want Luke Bryan's spot. They want you know what I mean. So you have to like you have to work a little bit. These people that you know, move here for two years and then go home and shit on Nashville because, you know, they didn't make it or whatever. Man, you didn't work hard enough. Like, it's a 10-year town. And Haley Woodard did 12 years in a 10-year town for yeah. a reason, you know what I mean? Yeah, and everybody's, like you said, everybody's path is different. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's such a competitive town, and but I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Me man. too. I, I, love, I love getting to see the country with John and, and just help him as much as I can. Do you think touring helps you not get sick of Nashville because we're gone so much? Yes. I think for me that's because I was – I think if I had stayed bouncing and I was doing that five nights a week yeah. on Broadway, I'd feel different. But going to XYZ town, city, yeah. it keeps it fresh. Yeah, I, th I think so too. I mean, it's – you know, it's grown – Nashville's grown a lot. I'm yeah, like, you since you've I mean? been here especially. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot different. But, you know, it's – I love it, man. It's just, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to say little New York City, but there's always something in the air there. You know what I mean? Like, it's... it's There's an energy. Yeah, man. It, it, it's cool to watch. You know, you could go into... That's what I tell people all the time. I'll get people that visit, and they'll send me a video of somebody playing. They're like, this is the best guy I ever heard. I was like, yeah, everybody's best from their hometown is here, and some of them are playing Chili's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just what it is, and I, I love it. And, and the people who really, you know, hunker down and, and work or the people who end up, you know, making it. And that's, you know, I got a lot of love for Charlie and Gary, the way they do stuff and their mentality on things. And, you know, those boys work hard. And, you know, that whole, like you talk about that whole class of guys of, you know, Riley, John, Combs, and Travis Denning and, and people like that. Those are, you know, they came here to do the damn thing, you know. And that same group, Jordan Rager and Cole Taylor, you know. Yep. Like, I love it, man. It's it's an infectious town, and there's nowhere I'd rather be. And like I said, like I'm I'm very blessed to get. Most people don't get to do one thing they love. I get to do two things I love. Yeah. And I'm very very. I, I it it is not lost. Like Coach Taylor on Friday Night Light says, he's like it ain't lost on me. Yep. It's not lost on me. Like I understand. I, I understand that I'm a very lucky human to get to do this. But you and, but you worked your ass off to get here, hey, dude. Hey, That's man. part of it. And I'll I'll tell you one cool thing is. So John does hate one thing I do. What's that? Anytime we have a big nine or a big celebration, I kind of give him a hug. He's like, we still got work to do. He's like, man, just enjoy it. And I'm like, <laughs> we still got work to do. And, uh, and that's our mentality. Well, you know, he makes his grand old Opry debut. God bless John for being one of the best dudes I know. Um, we were supposed to play grand old Opry 2020, April 2020. Gets canceled. And then uh, they come around and ask again. And so I get a phone call. John's like, hey, man, got a new Opry date. I was like, hell yes, because I'd never been. Yeah. I said I was not going to the Grand Ole Opry until John Langston plays it. I missed Fletcher, Combs, Ray. I missed all the homies. De Denning, I missed all the homies' debut because I stuck to this promise. And uh, Fletcher and Everett were making their debut in January. I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I might get to go watch them. He goes, man, they told me I could pick any of these days, and I picked February 22nd. I said, dude, what? He goes, dude, you waited this long. Like, it's got to be your birthday. So, <laughs> so I miss Fletcher and Everett, obviously. Yeah. And we, uh, or I say we, but he makes his Grand Ole Opry debut on my birthday. That's what kind of guy John is because he knew how important that was. I've been in Nashville forever. Never been to the to the holy grounds of we the, wait, wait the until, Opry. Wait until he was playing and he yeah. was standing in the circle. And uh, we get in there and we go to the green room and. I guess he had already been there, or like snuck it in, or I forgot how that happened. I was it was such an all day for me because I was 
looking around. Yeah, you're like, a historian yeah. of country. Yeah. You love country music. I love man. country music. I'm just I'm looking at like names on the wall and like they got Luke Combs' hat, Kaidu Joe's hat in a case. And I'm like, <laughs> man, that guy played my bar. You know yeah. what I mean? Like all this cool stuff and get in the green room and he's got this guitar. He's like, get that guitar out of the case for me. And it was his guitar from radio tour. And he had wrote a nice note for happy birthday for me. And at the bottom, he says, uh, P.S., we still got work to do. Hell yeah. So if you ever need to know anything about John Langston, that's the kind of guy he is. So I'm very lucky. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I hate <laughs> telling that story because I, like, I get all like... <laughs> Dude, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's a it's a family thing. That's your fucking brother, and yeah, you guys dude. have been through been through breaking down on the way to Colorado together, and been through all that, and then to see the and then like you said, still still got work to do. You guys yeah. still still growing. And now another thing that you love that I got to ask about because uh, and down here, you're the fast food game, Bojangles. <laughs> yeah. What is it about Bojangles that separates it from all the other? Because I like. Because we don't have all these all these yeah. chicken places up north. We got Popeyes and KFC, and that's it. Man, I like Bojangles though. It's dude, good. Bojangles is awesome. Because Do they sponsor you yet? I've done some stuff for them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was. It's funny. I, I uh, the first like giveaway thing I got to do. It was this thing where I like I had to post and you tag people, and I was giving away like a fifty dollar gift card or whatever. Nobody tagged anybody because everybody was just so happy it finally happened for me. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like two hundred some comments like. You finally did it. Way to go. I'm so proud of you and all this. I'm like, damn, I have nobody to give these gift cards to. You yeah. know? But uh, no, I mean, it's you get a breakfast biscuit all day. You wake up hungover at 1 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is, and you're like, damn, I missed breakfast. Well, no, you didn't because Bojangles. It's, it's bow time. It's always bow time. Cajun filet biscuit, egg and cheese, whatever kind of tea you drink, order I got. I've now on the unsweet tea game i'm not a real southerner anymore <laughs> and the bow rounds yeah. i mean it's good i mean it's it's do, do you fuck with the bowberry biscuits if you're feeling frisky no you know what there are a lot of sugar in those things yeah contrary to popular belief i know what i look like i'm not a sweets guy <laughs> really like i'll dabble with like some hot chocolate chip cookies out of the oven but not give me an extra hot dog or give me some more fries like that <laughs> that's my thing you know what i mean like you won't get the chocolate cake at portillas that no I get the chocolate cake shake. Oh, dude. Yeah, I didn't do the shake last time. I've only been there once. I got the... Okay. Trey was giving me shit because he's been on the diet game. Trey's down about 30 pounds yeah. right now. He's been... And I give him credit because he was in... He, I've been on the road. I've been. It's just been me and him on the road together the last couple of weeks. And we yeah. were in Chicago, and Chicago has, has is a legal legal state and city. So I'm hitting the dispos. I'm I'm feeling extra hungry. I'm yeah. getting I'm getting my Luminati's um, deep dish pizza. I'm eating all this shit. I ate a big one of the what is it the big beef sandwich they have there. That's what you eat. ate it wet. I couldn't decide yep. between fries and onion rings, so I got a small fry and a small onion ring. And the old lady behind me said, you better get the chocolate cake. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get the chocolate cake, too. Yep. I ate all of that in about 15 minutes before the, before we had to be at the Kid Rock show. And yep. Trey was just looking at me like, you fat fuck. And I'm like, man, it tastes so good, though. Portillo's where it's at, dude. It's I, so good. I, I don't get the – that's another case of, like, the extra. I get the, the Portillo's beef sandwich. You get it what? Portillo's way, which is wet – with on extra onions and all that stuff. Ooh, okay. And then uh, I get a dog too because it's Chicago, so I get a Chicago dog, and then I'll get a I'll get a cake a cake shake usually. I've heard of the cake. I mean, are there actually pieces of cake in the shake, buddy? All right, next time, McElwain, remember that next time we're up there, but, we're getting we're getting Portillos and we're getting cake shakes, buddy. Portillos, if you if you got the the extra coin, uh, Chicago cut. Is the be best steak r restaurant in the whole country? Really? I mean, dude, it's like you know. Do you know Dave Canavan? You know mm -hmm. him well. He has Emerald Isle, the bar up there. He's he's boys with um, partners with Ed on a lot of stuff up there. If I've met him, I met him yeah. in the past. Yeah, he's all. a good, good, good dude. But he kind of was like because we went to the casino. Have you been to the Rivers Casino up in Chicago? No, and I like to. <laughs> Casinos are dangerous, bro. Especially yeah, on the road when you're yeah, with the boys. Yeah, me and John are <laughs> connoisseurs of casinos. And if there's like trips where we're like we need to get out, like I kind of don't mention them. You know what I mean? I don't even think he knew there was a. If he watches this, he's gonna learn there's a casino in Chicago now. But no, uh, it's right in the heart of it too. Oh goodness gracious! Not far from Wrigleyville. No, we we our Chicago trips are pretty like planned out because that's like. Dude, it's one of our favorite cities to go to, and obviously because of Ed and Joe's. And but we go to the cut, 
Then we go to. Uh, you been to a Cubs game? Oh yeah, I went to. I've been to a couple of Cubs games. I went this year when Jeb played. I went, saw Cubs Braves and. Oh, sick! Uh, That's great. We were on our 14 game winning streak and. Yeah. Cubs were on their 12-game losing streak, and the Cubs beat us. <laughs> so I jinxed us. But uh, And then uh, what's the bar called? There's a bar we like going to. Uh, Old, Mother, no, Old Mother Hubbard's. It's one of seven, seven or ten bars. I forget what it is. That's a lot of stay up until 4 a.m. And it's basically like the tin roof of Chicago. It's like an old sports bar. It's you know what I mean. Like Christmas lights up. Just and, a good time, man. It, it, good bartenders uh, who remember us every time we go in there. Really, which, which is which is that's cool. impressive yeah. when you're just visiting. Yeah, yeah. It's the same like lady. I say lady. Yeah. I don't know how she is, but <laughs> she's always in there, and she's like, "Oh, Nashville." So <laughs> last time I was out there with Jeff, she did that. I was like, "So this- Chicago's your favorite one? To, say your favorite one to go." Favorite city to Man, go to? Chicago's up there. Portland, Oregon is up there for me. We're actually going there next week. We're doing... Why Portland? I feel like that's just so dude, out there. And I haven't been up that way. Dude, I've been it, to Portland, Maine a bunch. I haven't been to Portland, sum, Oregon. Summers in Portland, Oregon, they're, it's like 70 degrees. No humidity. Uh, they've got like this food truck alley that's like a mile long. It, like Food Oregon. truck alley? Like it's nothing but food trucks. It is in. It is. We're going up next week. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> yeah, please do. If we get time to roll through there, <laughs> but I mean, any kind of food you think of is like in this block of of just food trucks and then Voodoo Donuts, which is like oh, a Voodoo state. Donuts is great. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we had a good time. We did like three days up there in Portland. Um, yeah, I like it up there a lot. I mean, we found the only country bar. Hey, there and, you go. And drank. They had like John Daly's on like for their special and. Or we just sat up there and drink John Daly's. But I love Portland. I love Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati's very underrated. Yeah. They have a casino as well. Yes, they do. Been, yep. Been there. They have a casino <laughs> and a tin roof. Yep. So very underrated city. Plus, like, you got the van days where you're driving. There's not a more beautiful drive. In or out. I've hit it at. Sun up, sun down. Just going over that bridge and yep. looking at Cincinnati. Yeah, like, the Bengal Stadium's right there. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then you get to drive through, like, the heart. I'm like, man, this is, like, whoever designed this, like, whatever architect or whoever did this, did this right. Because you're just coming through Florence, y'all. You know that big yep. water tower? Yep. You, you're going through. <laughs> you get from Kentucky to Ohio real quick. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, oh, shit. You know, I, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh man, this is beautiful right here. Yeah. And then nothing, nothing, nothing till Columbus. So <laughs> no, that's that's one of the craziest things is like learning the whole country. Yeah, learning the high and if you've been in the van, do you still drive the uh drive the drive the bus every now I and help again? Out, I help out with that because you don't need a CDL for it. I think we're yeah, like that's how we are with the bandwagon. Yeah. And and I you know, I like driving. Um I feel the safest when I'm dry, obviously. What what do you have up? What are you are you a Gatorade guy? Are you a peanut M&M's guy? What are you like snacking on, drinking on? Jerky guy? No, dude, I'm not really a big snack guy or when is, I'm driving. Or is, are you a zit? You just popping in the zins? Yeah, man. I have it. I gave up dip in 2020. God bless you. When everybody else picked it back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh I've had a couple in the times. Um, but you know, it's What was your what was your can of choice? Oh, you? Grizzly Wintergreen. Grizzly Wintergreen guy? Bro, dude, welfare bear. <laughs> all, welfare bear. All day long, dude. It was t- two two eighty seven a can. <laughs> yeah. And dude, it was I'd buy it by the roll and feel like a king, yep. dude. But I got on the on the Zen train. I'll have to swap because my the skull over here. Yes, dead. the price of skull has gone up here recently. Uh, five dollars a can almost. Five dollars a yeah. can for skull, you gotta get on that grizzly. No, I got out the right time. You did. Yeah, you did. I, it's I mean, like, it's this, like Dogecoin. You got yeah, it. Right this time. stuff is expensive too, for like the fifteen pouches or whatever. But I mean, dude, when I got on that, I was such a big dipper. Like, I would I would do the sixes, and I'd put three sixes in my mouth, so eighteen milligrams of like nicotine. Jeez. And like that was the only thing that would help me. And then I've weaned off. I'm on on the threes. I do like two threes just for instead of one six just for so i could feel like feel it in my yeah. mouth you know kind of thing use that as a sound bite but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no it's, it's literally uh black coffee iced coffee usually and good, nic- old, good good cold brew nicotine and uh keith whitley though i think the boys are about sick of hearing keith whitley out, out of the front of that <laughs> thing but old country i mean what's cool is you know brad will hop up with me and he'll play like you know, the rock stuff or play me as demos and Steven hops up and it's like, 
boys to men and stuff like that and you know so i mean it's it's good our old sound guy jason would get up there and play hard rock and like i could tolerate the nickelback and you're not a big butt rock guy man the ba- so our new drummer is his name's pablo Rivera's. he's from he was in chelsea grin steven and brad love heavy metal so yeah that, oh I mean, yeah dude, when john goes to bed and like that that lounge area like two in the morning it's like <laughs> there was room for a mosh pit they'd be doing it I'm like, yeah what the <laughs> hell is and like there's a sub like tommy did this right put a great sound system the sub is right behind the driver's seat so it's just i'm like what in the i still haven't figured out how to unhook that thing i'm gonna learn how to unhook that thing but no i mean we we got a good crew and you know it's man god's good you know what i mean Amen. life is good god's good I just, you know, love love sitting here and talk. I'm not a me, me, me guy. You know what I mean? That's kind of why I put this off for, like, the longest time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I got a lot of respect for what you do and Nikki T and just appreciate a lot, that, of, man. a lot of stuff going on in town. You know, the In the Round podcast, the In the Round stuff over at Live Oak. Yeah, the round, the round's taken off from yeah. what it was. I mean, we have helped. I, I, don't want, I don't want to say, like, 2020 was a great year for The second half of 2020 for me yeah. was awesome between seeing what seeing – what, happened with with trey and all of his stuff and then we were one of the few rounds we were lucky to be at live oak yeah and they let us do our thing even though there were people up in the in the apartment across the street taking pictures from the balcony trying yeah. to get them in trouble you know well hey hasten's a g hasten is a g dude Hayson. he is the man he, to me he's the one of the best ambassadors as far as like bar owners in town yeah. he's right up there with anybody else and just supporting yeah. the music supporting what we do on the industry side like yeah. he's the guy yeah hasten you know, in the same aspect, of obviously Ward's great. Yeah, dude, the guy. I call Ward the Godfather. Or you know, we did a whiskey jam in Tifton, like in. You did a whiskey jam at the Gin. Yeah, back in the day, we had Travis, Farron, Rachel's, Eric, Dylan, Ward played, and it wasn't like, it wasn't how it is up here because it was a rowdy ass college bar. I mean, like it was like. I did not know that is. I would have paid to have seen that the Tifton crowd at a yeah, whiskey jam. Yeah, man, that's where I met Eric Dylan at. It was there's a. I'm not gonna tell that story on camera because uh, I love Eric. Uh, Eric had it was it was it was a fun night. Eric, Eric, me and Eric still talk about that man every time I see him. Man, uh, but Ward, I mean, there's not. I mean, nobody's doing what Ward's doing, and nobody like everybody tries to replicate. Obviously, because you know it's such a music town, but the brand, you know, alone is just. Yeah, I say if it weren't for Ward, I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing. No, I mean he literally gave the town the playbook. You know what I mean? And he's such an evil genius. He didn't give you all the plays because <laughs> he's still growing, and you know, Ward is a. Uh, or somebody I lean on a lot. In yeah, town. he's somebody I can take. Like he's he's one of those guys that'll just bring like me being new. Me being it'll be four years in October that I've lived here, and Ward's been here obviously a lot longer. That whiskey yeah. jam's older than I've been in town. Yeah, and I could shoot him a text or give him a call, and he'll he'll answer. He'll hit me back. Like yeah, he's Ward's, he's very supportive of what what we all do. It's important to have that in the community. Yeah, Ward Ward likes the idea of Nashville growing, and I mean just uh we did the the hardy takeover and just to watch all that go down and like just like take a step back and just look and be like damn ward like and ryan onan he's a part of that yep. too i want to make sure his name yeah. is said because ryan's just the biggest part of that and he, yeah, that was nikki t's thing with hicks tape yeah nikki yeah. t was fun. i was texting nikki t and he's like bro you're not gonna believe we were out on the road we were heading out to um i think indiana that 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 yeah. night and we and, and, and nikki t was like bro you're not gonna believe what's going on over here yeah. Like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it was it was wild. I uh John went up on the bus with Hardy and uh I went to go grab him for our set or whatever and I popped my head up, said hey to Hardy and was like, dude, you broke losers. You broke the bar. You broke the bar, he just laughed. <laughs> you know, and it's 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 man, and, and throw Hardy in that category too. I mean, like he's man, You've watched him you've watched him come up. I met Hardy back in the day. He played bass for CJ Solar. Yeah, he was a bass player. And CJ played my bar and Man, to watch Hardy just evolve like that, like I mean, it's special. You've dude. seen all those Hardy, yeah. Morgan, everybody that's that's out there right now. You've gotten to see, yeah, man, from your time in town or just being in the business. Yeah, man, it it makes me excited about you know 
what's coming. Like, yeah, there's a lot of cats out there yeah, coming up right there, now. There's some there's some dude at Red Door tonight that's gonna be Luke Combs big and nobody knows it yet. Nobody has any idea. He's yeah. just he's just sitting there spending his last his last twenty bucks having yeah. a good time with his friends. Yeah, man. I mean that's that's the beauty of this town. I mean it's it's a lot of hard work and it's sometimes it's luck too and being in the right place at the right time. But yeah, I mean like like I said, there's some kid gonna be at Red Door tonight that's gonna be selling out stadiums one day and it's like, man, that's that's what this town's all about, yep. dude. Like, just the come up and the hard work, and I don't know, man. I I just love it here. Yeah. Like, I never thought I'd leave Georgia, never, ever. I love where I'm from. I'm, I mean, you go on my Facebook. I've got my Camden County. I'm from Camden County, Georgia. That is my Facebook picture header. I'm proud of where I'm from. The nine one two and Dylan and Screech know all about that, and you know. And watching every, you know, watching the Dillons and the Noah Hicks come up and have their turn, like it's just so. I mean, like, where do you get to see that? Like, okay, the minor leagues, you get to see it for like somebody's down there for like six months, and then they make it to the big leagues or whatever. But like, somebody's working their ass off for like ten years before yeah. they even get to sniff like Double A, you know. So, and then Bradley Jordan, of course, Brad, I, I definitely uncle uncle ronnie yeah i've known bradley since 2011 yeah a long 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 time i used to go to peace street tavern and hang with him and hang with with his crowd and you know he's got a lot of good stuff going on with him and he's man him and i would put him and ward in the same category as like i hope that one day there's like a place in the hall of fame dedicated to guys like those two and Ed Warm and Rick and stuff like that because I mean, they're a big part of because without without them none of the guys yeah. we work with are are at the point that we're not at the like country music as a whole is is would not be the same without those kind of guys yeah I mean you, you asked me today you know country music hall of fame Bradley Jordan and Ward Gunther yeah and you know Rick and all those guys I don't know Robert Gallagher Robert Gallagher yep. they all deserve their little spot in that because without those clubs there's nowhere to cut your teeth and figure out what works what doesn't work there's no way to build a fan base there's no you don't get to the radio without those guys yep hands down and I true when I I genuinely mean that like I'm not just saying that to be whatever like the Country Music Hall of Fame needs to have guys like Ward and Bradley Jordan in there, one hundred percent, at least for a month. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. give them their give them give them their flowers while they're still here, and not have to talk about them. Like, oh, he was so good. Yeah, like, no need for a was. It's they is. are. Yeah, yep. they are in the in the present. What's something you wish you could you could have? What's something you would tell yourself? Um, say seven years ago, you're grinding down at the gym before coming up here. What's something you tell yourself now? Pack your shit and get up here now. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, dude, like. I got lucky moving when I did, and it wasn't like a lot of people who move here. I knew people here already. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't have it as hard. I knew where the spots were. I knew where to go and where to hang and how to network and stuff like that. But just get up here sooner and, like, you know, trust trust in yourself. I mean, I had a lot of people from, you know, the Coles in the world and Luke's and Carrie's and John's, you know, telling you for so long, like, dude, just you're – you're better than a bar. You know what I mean? And there's nothing, there's no negative to that at all. I love my time down there. And, you know, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things, man. Like I should have, I should have been up here. I should have left out Austin 2009 and just said, I'm out. I'm, I'm going up there. But without the, but your, but your years but that you, you never, were there. But yeah. you never know. Like, Everything happens for a reason. God has a path and you got to yeah. go on it. Yeah, man. It's a, uh, God's been very good to me. I'm very open about that stuff. Yep. I mean, everybody knows that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you put your faith in, in the Lord and he'll return it. Might not be the way you see it at first. <laughs> yeah. You might be selling hot dogs. That's for sure. In front, of the, in front of the bar for a little bit, but there's a method to the madness. And, you know, not only just putting your faith up there with him, surrounding yourself with good people and good things happen. You know yep, what I mean? For so, sure. That's really it, man. Dude, well, this has been a yeah, pleasure, my sorry, man. Sorry, sorry if I went too no, long. No, dude. Or... The more the more you talk, the more the, more, the better the episode is. Yeah. Trust me, there's there's guests that I've had that won't say a word, and yeah. it's like pulling. It's like it's like I'm a dentist pulling their teeth out, you know. Yeah. So this was freaking great, um, JD. Really appreciate it. Yeah, brother. you know I love you. I'm proud of what you do, and keep it up, and keep I, giving all these guys 
chances because without you know your rounds, some people don't ever get heard and songs never get heard. You, you never you never know whose life you're gonna change, man. Yeah, man. We, we, I I sure as hell yeah. appreciate that, man. Y'all be sure um, look him up on social media, JD Groover. Just look up him. look up um, all the dates where John where you guys are gonna be out on the road. Yeah, we're uh, this is our only weekend off till Thanksgiving. Let's go. So. That's exciting stuff. I know I know the the, the lady yeah. back home doesn't like hearing that, yeah. but that as a as a guy that tours that hypes me up to hear. Yeah, man, it's, it's it, what we love. You know, there's uh, I know at one point. Nobody played more shows in our genre than John Langston at one point. We yeah. we were road dogs. We ain't scared to. I mean, we've been from from Maine to Spain, man. <laughs> Whatever we ain't, we ain't scared. We've been to Moncton, Canada. Look that place up. <laughs> So hell, hell yeah. yeah, man! That's what it's all about. But uh, guys, thanks as always for uh, watching uh, the In the Round podcast. Uh, shout out to our sponsors, Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios, and of course our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you uh, leave a review, leave a rating, tell your mama and them, and uh, we'll keep growing this thing. And uh, remember, we do every other Tuesday night at Live Oak Music Row. We do our In the Round Songwriters Night. So hopefully, we'll see you all there. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you all next time. This has been the In the Round podcast. Podcast.